JP Poll is here, week two edition. These are not rankings. You're going to notice some teams that won and went down. You're going to notice some teams lost and uh, in some cases went up. This is power rating world. This is neutral field favorability. I don't explain this ad nauseum every week, but just so you know, I know we got thousands of you that are new and watching or listening for the first time. This, this stuff's not going to make sense if you think I'm trying to rank these teams. I do not think this is what the playoff committee poll should look like if they release the rankings today. I cannot be any clearer on that, and yet there will still be disagreement. So let's dive in, and I'm going to give you some facts along the way. I'm going to give you a top 25. Number one is unchanged. Number one is Georgia, but there is a change here. Georgia is opening up a little bit of an early season gap. I'll give you that in a second. So Georgia, Texas, Ohio State, Bama, and Penn State is the number five team in the country. So Georgia right now, I got a 10-point gap. The model has a 10-point gap between them and number five, which is Penn State. Now, I certainly know if I put Georgia and Penn State on the neutral field today and I favor Georgia by 10, all of you would lay the 10. That's okay. I'm just telling you what the model thinks. You're free to disagree with it. Texas is at number two. They're up two spots. Ohio State dropped a spot. Now, you got to understand, when I'm talking about rising and dropping, sometimes you drop not because your grade changed, but because other teams' grades changed, and now the net result is they're higher than you. Um, so that explains that. There's not a whole lot of movement here. The movement was actually Georgia. Georgia just secured or firmed up their grip on number one. Now, we'll see if that maintains itself. But right now, Georgia, uh, we got a, a fairly sizable, like a three, three and a half, four point gap between them and Texas, who's number two. Georgia plays at number two, Texas. Georgia plays at number four, Alabama. Georgia plays at Ole Miss. In fact, Colin, go ahead and show me six through 10. I think Ole Miss is in there. Yes, they are. Uh, Georgia plays at number nine, Ole Miss. So Miami's a huge riser here. The AP doesn't have Miami in the top 10, which is just. That's why we do the JP poll, kids. Miami, we've got it number six right now. Highest I think we've ever had in Miami since I've done this. Oregon's down four spots. Model was just disgusted with Oregon in week one. And as I've told you, we don't knee jerk, but we do reserve, and the model reserves the right to pivot pretty hard. Some of your hardest pivots should be happening in the first few weeks of the season. Notre Dame, they got a big win at Texas A&M. I told you I had a sneaking suspicion Notre Dame would not move. In the JP poll, they did not move. They're number eight. That doesn't mean they didn't get rewarded. That means we already had them rated properly, and they did about what the number eight rated team in the country should do against Texas A&M. So nothing more, nothing less. And in case you missed it earlier, I did misspeak the other day. Notre Dame has an elite secondary. I was trying to say there aren't elite pieces on their offense, therefore the margin for error is going to be a little bit lower, but their schedule is workable, so they are probably going to the playoff. That's what I was trying to say. Ole Miss is nine. Tennessee is number 10. I would have Tennessee a little bit north of some of these teams. Just saying, if these were my own power ratings, which they're supposed to be, but I was not yielding to the model, Tennessee would be even higher than 10 for me. Next up, how about number 11? What do we have for them? The University of Southern California is the number 11 team in the JP poll. I don't need to see any more. I know some of you do, as uh, judging from the comments I got when I talked about this the other night. I think USC is a Big Ten championship contender. The model agrees. So the model has about a touchdown gap right now between USC at 11 and the favorites up there. Ohio State, uh, Penn State is right up there, Oregon. USC is, is still, there's, there's a little bit of a, a point spread gap there, not nearly as big as it was. USC, i love to see more from the run game, but I was just flat out wrong back in the spring. I didn't think Danton Lynn could do in one spring summer what he had done at UCLA. And a lot of folks over on the Peristyle told me I was wrong. And I got to salute you guys. Early return, looks like uh, that's one to nothing. You guys lead me. So USC number 11, Kansas State 12. LSU didn't drop much. So let me tell you what the model looked at. Model looked at that and said, LSU's still a really good team. It's just that USC was probably underrated, and so it reacted accordingly. So LSU's still pretty much right where they were. Uh, Utah, number 14. Oklahoma's 15. Oklahoma dropped three spots. It's not because they lost or did anything bad in week one. It's just other teams were upgraded and ended up rising above their overall 
power rating. Next up, 16 through 20 is as follows. Michigan, big dropper. Missouri, Louisville, huge riser. Texas A&M fell pretty precipitously. And Iowa at number 20. So Michigan um, is just a dogfight against Fresno State, and they stretched it late. Uh, very unimpressive. And they got Texas. We'll see Michigan in person this Saturday. So forget week one. Like if they beat Texas, uh, you, no one has to worry about anything with Michigan. Missouri 17, they dropped two spots. That's more a, a condition of people rising above them. A&M down nine spots. Now, the model is not going to drop A&M out of the top 25 because they lost at home by 10 to a top 10 team. But it did punish them. Uh, quarterback is not necessarily the position and strength that we thought, that the model thought. So A&M did fall. Iowa is sitting here hosting Iowa State this weekend. They are number 20 right now. And number 21 through 25 will show you that number 20 Iowa is facing number 24, Iowa State. Uh, it goes Clemson, Kentucky, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, UCF. Clemson's down two spots. Clemson didn't drop a whole lot, even though they got blown out, because we already weren't that high on Clemson. We had Clemson uh, 19. And so they got blown out by the number one team in the country, and therefore drop them two spots, but not really all that much. Uh, Clemson, we think we pretty much had properly rated already. Kentucky is one of the sneakiest teams in the country. Kentucky plays South Carolina this Saturday. It's a Ramen Noodle Express best bet. We laid nine and a half. That line already moved to ten and a half. So if you didn't watch the Sunday show, you already missed out on the best number there. Oklahoma State, Mike Gundy, I kid you not, is doing his coach's show at a senior living facility in Stillwater, and it's sponsored. So he found the most either the most crotchety or the most favorable group that he could possibly speak in front of. And he does his coaches show. I'm not kidding you. There are pictures. I should have gotten one for you at, uh, I don't think it's called a nursing home, but it's an assisted senior living facility. And there's a fl picture floating around out there of him on the stage. And then there's another picture of the crowd. And it, the average age is like 90. It's great. It's awesome. I fully approve of it. Like two thumbs up on the effort. It's just a little jarring as a photo. That is not why Oklahoma State fell two spots. Oklahoma State is unchanged. A couple of teams rose above them. So there's UCF at number 25. So that's the JP poll. I welcome all comments. Uh, here's what I will say. You're free to say whatever you want to about this. Here's the worst comment that I get. This is wrong. Really? You mean you don't agree with me on 1 through 25 in a poll? How about you tell me where it's wrong? And how about you tell me why it's wrong? And how about you give me your 1 through 25 based on what I'm trying to do here? We don't care about rankings. I'm doing neutral field favorability. I had a guy last week, I can't remember which matchup it was, but I had a guy come at me and, man, I wish I realized, remember what matchup it was. I mean, there was, a, there was like a two-touchdown favorite that had lost outright. And so, you know, I did the whole thing where I said, well, the favorite would be favored again this week. And that guy said, well, if I ran a sports book, they wouldn't. Well, it's, it's mentalities like that that actually build the sports books, but not for you. Your money builds it for someone else because that is ignorance. That's not how this works. I don't have a problem if you rank a team higher, but when we're talking about power ratings here, it's just a different philosophy entirely.